Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are doing well. Back to back videos for me. As I said, I'm gonna be traveling at the start of this week, so you won't see me until the end. So I wanted to get you a couple videos up uh, to do some more book recommendations. Um, today's video is inspired twofold. Um, the first is I Was Caught in Snow, which you guys heard about a couple videos ago, which was crazy and did a bunch of cold weather traveling. Not a fan. Um, and uh, Dan. Dan was like, you know, we've been in all this cold weather. You, weather, you should really do a video where you talk about books that you should read in cold weather or where cold weather is sort of a factor in the book in some way or somehow. And so I was like, well, of course, I have books that I could do like that, and it'd be fun, it'd be different. All of these books are out, you can get them all. So as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because I have a feeling if you are a cold weather reader, or if you're just a reader, a lot of these books are gonna wind up on your TBR. Order them from your local independent bookstore, get them from your library, however get you get the books that you read. So let's get started. I'm gonna recommend a graphic novel to start. This book was a little bit everywhere years and years ago. When did this come out? I can't even remember. 2005-ish, I think, um, the full collection. And that is Blankets by Craig Thompson. Um, and he is also the illustrator and the writer of this. And just look at how pretty his artwork is. Um, set in with um, Michigan, this is the story basically of Craig's own life and dealing with he comes from a very, very religious Christian family um, that um, and deals with a very, very tough childhood with some very aggressive parenting um, and who he becomes. It also deals with him becoming an adult, relationships, all of those factors as he reminisces basically on where he comes from and who he is now after the life that he has led. And just, you know, I was thinking cold weather, but just take a look at I mean, just look at this one. You see this, like just his art is so simple, but so vibrant. Um, and um, it is really not only about his relationship with his parents and family, but also his relationship with a new woman in his life. So that is Blankets by Craig Thompson. And um, I have been to Michigan and at times of year, it can be very, very, very cold there. And this one has a lot of snow in it. <laughs> um, a book that I talked a lot about on my channel and um, really should um, be no surprise to find here is The Child Finder by Renee Denfield. This is the story of a little girl who goes missing in the snow when her family goes to pick out a Christmas tree. Three years later, her parents hire an investigator named Naomi. Naomi, I want to say. Um, yes, Naomi. Um, uh, who is sort of known for finding children who everyone else thinks is lost. She comes and she starts sort of searching for this young girl. It also flips back and forth where we get a young girl who is being held captive by a man who's created sort of a fairy tale fantasy of who she is, where she came from, and how she came into the situation that she's in. Um, and then Naomi's past also comes to play. I actually just saw um, on the Twitter world that there is a sequel to this book coming out, um, The Butterfly Effect, I think, in October. I could not be more excited, but this definitely takes takes place in the sort of forests of Portland. There's a lot of snow and winter weather. It definitely feels cold. There's that atmosphere to it. So if you like books that are a little bit of a mystery, a little bit of a family dynamic, and also those things where you're flashing back and you're learning about your protagonist, I highly recommend The Child Finder by Renee Denfield. Read it now because in October you can read the sequel. There you go. Okay. Out from Europa editions are the next two books in this list. One is one, again, that I've raved about a ton, and that is the YA novel, book one in the four book series, A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. This is in the Mirror Visitor series, and this is translated from the French by, is it, it's Hildegard Sorel. Um, this is a fantasy YA series where the world is split into sort of these um, kingdoms that float like this. Our main character has the ability to travel through mirrors and also when she touches objects she can tell their history. She is more or less sort of um, married off in a political marriage to a man um, on a distant remote 
um, co country. That's, I don't know if that's the right word. But um, she goes there and it turns out there's a ton of political intrigue. There's a lot of stuff going on and she is in the thick of it. But she has to pretend to be someone else so she is not found and killed because that is what the enemies of her husband-to-be will want to do. This book is, is so good. I cannot wait for book two to come out. I'm so excited. It's got a little bit of um, Philip Pullman vibes to it. It sort of has that atmosphere to the Golden Compass, in my opinion. Um, but I was really driven. It's got a strong female lead who is definitely the main character, and she takes charge. Um, and she has a very tense relationship with her husband-to-be. He's not always likable. But then you start to find things out and it becomes very interesting, very interesting. I loved this book. Um, and his um, sort of, uh, the, the world that he lives in is covered in snow and ice and is very cold and the atmosphere is very, very wintry. And so that's A Winter's Promise by Cristel Davos, The Mirror's Visitor Book One from Europa. And um, yeah, I can't wait. I hear the second one comes out this year. And um, yeah, I'll be uh, asking Europa for that like tomorrow. Um, and then the next book out from Europa is Winter by Christopher Nicholson. This is actually a fictional telling of the, um, the end of the life of Thomas Hardy. It seems a little on the nose to talk about a winter book called Winter. But that, this is not only about the winter season, this is actually about the winter of one's life, the end of one's life. Thomas Hardy doesn't have a lot of artistic stuff going on, and he becomes infatuated with a young actress who is playing Tess in a play version of Tess of the Dubervilles. The play is moving to London, and he has decided that he wants this local actress to have that part, and his infatuation grows to the dismay of his second wife, Florence. Let me make sure that's right. Florence. And so Florence has decided to not allow this young woman's dream to come true because she doesn't like what it's doing to her life. So that is, I love books about authors where they sort of take a different perspective or a fictional idea. And that is just one of my sort of my love uh, love book things. I don't even know what that is. Plot devices uh, that I really enjoy. So that is Winter by Christopher Nicholson. And yeah. And if you like some Thomas Hardy, you could definitely go to read some Thomas Hardy in Winter, can't you? Like Jude the Obscure would be a good one. Um, uh, definitely has a winter-esque vibe. Um, the next book I've talked about a couple of times, but that's Winter Kept Us Warm by Anne Reif. Um, this book came out two years ago now or one year ago now. I think it was last year, actually, last year. This is the story of a love triangle, two men, one woman. They meet in Germany and it is about their relationship, how they come together. And um, it takes place all over the world. They travel a lot, the US, Morocco, I believe. Um, and it's also sort of about the dynamics of friendship and relationships and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's one of those books that I find I find personally hard to talk a ton about um, because I want you to sort of read it and get yourself immersed. Um, but everyone I know that's read this book has loved this book. So trust that and read Winter Kept Us Warm by Anne Ryef. I mean, the cover alone just screams cold, doesn't it? The next book is um, the second novel by Ewan Ivey, and that is To the Bright Edge of the World. I very well could have her first novel, The Snow Child, up here. Her books take place in the lovely state of Alaska. She's from Alaska. She um, is one of those people that just creates Alaska in different time periods. The Snow Child is a retelling of a fairy tale. This is sort of a retelling of a historical aspect set in the 1800s, I want to say, 1885 in um, the forest um, of Alaska territory. It's about a young pregnant woman who has left home when her husband goes out into the wilderness and um, she has to deal with being alone in this place, in this world, in this harsh environment. But we also get the husband's adventures as well. So you really get a great sense of Alaska from many different perspectives. She is a phenomenal writer. I want to say The Snow Child was shortlisted for the Pulitzer, I want to say. 
Um, and this book is, I think, actually technically more interesting, um, and the story's a little more um, dynamic, but they're both very, very good. So that is the To the Bright Edge of the World by you and Ivy. But if you don't read this one, read The Snow Child, if that's more your aim, because they're both excellent. Uh, two books to tell you about last. Um, in this book, I'm not going to talk a lot about because I, I don't know. A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. I talk about all the time because it's probably in my top 10 favorite books of all time. This book takes place in um, Chechnya, Russia. Um, and this is sort of this, the basis of the story is a young girl's father is killed by revolutionaries and um, in Ch and the neighbor saves the eight-year-old girl by taking her to a local hospital where we have a young doctor who is basically running the hospital by herself. This is during the time where the people, the Russian uh, government and these revolutionaries were fighting against each other. There's a lot of sort of whose side are you on? Who's going to kill you today? Um, the book does a phenomenal job of sort of creating time and space, telling very different stories. I think I said yesterday in my video, I love interconnected short stories. This book has that sort of feel to it and because you do learn a lot about the doctor and her sister in their lives before she got to where she's at. You learn about the neighbor and how he got where he was at. You learn about all sorts of different things that really bring you to the apex of the novel, the sort of the, the meat and uh, potatoes part of it. You will be on the edge of your sheet, seat. He, Anthony Marr is a phenomenal writer. If you like um, him, his next book, The Collected Short Stories, The Czar, the, I always get it wrong. Hold on. What is your book, Anthony? The Czar of Love and Techno. Sorry about that. I just, for some reason, I always trip on the name of his second novel. But I highly recommend, I gave this book to everyone when it came out. And when I met him, I was just for clumped. So that is A Constellation of Vital Phenomenon by Anthony Mara. Last but not least is probably the least heard of book on this list. So there you go. I'm throwing in one that you maybe totally, absolutely missed. And that's Let Him Go by Larry Watson. Now, this book is set in 1951. It starts in North Dakota, but I think they wind up in Montana. And um, this is the story of an elderly couple whose only son has uh, passed away. And really the only member of the family they have left is their grandchild who is being raised by their daughter-in-law. She is getting married and really because um, of the grandmother, um, she wants to go to Montana and take the son away, the grandson away, I'm sorry, because he's really the only connection she has to her child. Um, the main character is uh, the grandfather or the husband. I think his name is George. Yes, George and Margaret. George doesn't, he isn't, in, he sort of isn't wanting to do this. He doesn't want to bring all of that back up, but his wife convinces him to go there and it becomes a fight between his family and the um, family of the daughter-in-law on who gets to keep the son. I will tell you this book is dark. It is cold. The ending is um, heart-wrenching. Um, that's all I'll say. I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to give any more away, but there will, time, there will be tears. Um, but it's also got sort of that that rough and tumble Midwestness to it. I don't know if that's actually a good description or not, but there's a sense of the, the, the world, the North Dakota, the Montana, sort of that rural um, snow and, you know, walking around in the mud and the grit of it all. Um, it is a great, great book. And it's one I don't think enough people have really read or maybe even know about. So that's Let Him Go by Larry Watson, and it is excellent. So this is a whole stack of books that you guys can read if you're looking for something a little wintry, cold, atmospheric. You can get lost in all of these books, some longer than others, but all worth your time. So as I always say, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. You know how much I appreciate it everything you guys do when you come and you visit. If you are new, I hope all of these books wind up on your TBR. Until next time, I wish you happy reading and I'll see you soon. Bye!